captain is having an action of 12 hours and the substantivity plays a very important role over there and that's the reason you give twice daily and why do you give 10 ml of 0.2 percent because you need to achieve a 20 milligram dose which is there and of course what are the other post-op instructions morning always use it after you break first because you don't want the chlorhexidine to be rinsed off one point and to avoid the bitter taste you do not tell the patients to rinse off immediately because you want the uh, chlorhexidine to be staying over there and then you have the next part of it wherein nine times you ask the patients to brush give a gap of half an hour to 40 minutes that is because even you brush and rinse there will be some amount of your sodium lauryl sulfate which could be residual on the tooth surface and you want to eliminate that and only then give your chlorhexidine okay so now i hope you are clear how we write a prescription for chlorhexidine and why we are writing each part of it which is there now coming to the next important part which are oral irrigators which have a clear ability to improve or maintain oral health and it can be of two types either it can be professionally delivered irrigators or home or self-applied irrigation which is there in the professionally derived irrigation any antimicrobial agent is used and the rationale behind this is the bacteria left behind uh, after or during the scaling and root cleaning could be eradicated by the antimicrobial solution applied into the pocket if additional bacteria could be eliminated we always will achieve a better outcome which is going to be there. how exactly are these oral irrigators having an efficacy as uh, helpful in chemical plaque control agent the first and foremost would be something called as penetration wherein the antimicrobial agent should be able to reach the base of the pocket concentration sufficient concentration to be bacteriostatic or bactericidal if you're using an antimicrobial agent and the duration maintain this concentration for a sufficient duration to be effective against the biofilm which is there so when you use any uh, professionally delivered irrigation which is there penetration in a pocket is accomplished with a blunt cannula using hand syringe or mechanical device placed one to two three millimeters in the pocket and 70 to 95 penetrate percent of penetration can be achieved in the antimicrobial solution up to the uh, depth of the pocket which is there but sometimes presence of calculus may impair the subgingival efficiency that is why oral irrigators are always used as an adjunct to your uh, scaling and root training procedures or after your scaling and root training procedures which are to the next one which is home or self-applied irrigation which is there here the use of oral irrigators are mainly to reduce the gingival bleeding to reduce the incidence of gingivitis and to reduce the bacterial burden which is there wherein irrigation effectively removes the biofilm and sometimes it is said to be more effective than the dental floss which is there here you can appreciate a picture of the home applied or the self applied irrigation devices which is a water pick you can see a water nozzle over there and you can see a reservoir wherein the water can be stored and that uh, irrigator tip is placed against the papilla which is there or the interproximal surfaces which are there will come to know it later and you just have to press the button and you can adjust you can see a dial of one two three four over there you can adjust the amount of pressure as well which is there so the mechanism of irrigation is where you apply a pulse stream of water or the antimicrobial agent anything as uh, the doc we advise or the patients prefer uh, the pulsation and pressure are critical component of irrigation device pulsation provides for compression and decompression phase which may lead to clearing of bacteria from the pocket area which is there you can observe that the pulsation rate would be around 1200 to 1400 per minute creates two zones of hydrokinetic mechanism which is there the first zone is something called as impact zone in which the solution initially contacts please observe the picture which is posted over here and the flushing zone in which the solution reaches the subgingival area or the sulcus which is there so it's something called as an impact zone where the solution that is from the irrigator tip contacts the gingival sulcus area which is there and the flushing zone in which the solution reaches the subgingival area or the sulcus which is there 
Now, with these irrigators, various tips are available, wherein there is something called as the jet tip, which is there, the soft side specific subgingival tip, and the soft taper tip, which is there. The previous picture, what you saw was something called as a jet tip, which is there. Supragingival, there are two irrigation uh, types which are there, mainly the supragingival irrigation and the subgingival irrigation. In the supragingival irrigation, you use the irrigation with the jet tip placed above the gingival margin resulting in penetration of a solution into the sulcus. The technique is, the most common tip is a plastic nozzle with a 90 degree bend at the tip, as you saw in the previous picture, at the tip attached to a pump, pulsating beads of water at speeds regulated by a dial. That is, once you switch on the button, uh, you have to fill in the reservoir with the water or with an antimicrobial agent. Keep the nozzle against the papilla which is there, and press on and control the pressure as your comfort, which is very important. Initially, patients might feel a bit of discomfort, but then you do get used to the amount of pressure which is there. Aim at the proximal papilla, hold for 10 to 15 seconds, trace along the gingival margin towards the next papilla and continue the full mouth irrigation which is there. And of course, this irrigation has to be done from both buccal and the lingual or bilateral surfaces. Of course, a very time consuming procedure, but definitely worth it of trying for the patients who are there. If gingival inflammation is there or patients have been just treated for a gingival or a periodontal disease which is there, you may ask them to use it at a low pressure and as or as some amount of discomfort, some amount of pain, some amount of bleeding may happen. But once the situation improves or the health improves, they can increase the pressure. But patient comfort should be the guide for the pressure. What pressure they are comfortable, they can use the oral irrigation device, which is. Now, next, coming to the next type of irrigation, which is something called as a subgingival irrigation, wherein you irrigate with a soft site specific tip is something called as subgingival irrigation here in the picture you can appreciate that the placement of tip is below the gingival margin and it is indicated in sites such as deep pocket focation areas around implants and around crown and bridges which are there the technique is the patients have to keep the soft rubber irrigator tip in gently inserted into the pockets or in the area of percussion or just below the gingival margin at least to an extent of 3 mm if possible and each pocket is flushed for few seconds which is there. You can appreciate in the picture over here how the pickpocket tip is gently placed slightly subgingival in order to irrigate the surface which is there. Regarding the safety, uh, there will be a definitely a reduction of the subgingival bacteria no harmful effects have been found on the epithelial lining or on the junctional epithelium which is there. It can be used in children and adults who are undergoing orthodontic therapy, very safe. Around implants, uh, definitely they have found that manual brushing and irrigation with water over 4 weeks would reduce an 81.8% reduction in bleeding which is better than flossing around that area. It is considered to be very safe even among diabetics. but there have been reports of some incidents of bacteremia, especially in cardiac patients who are there. So, use of oral irrigators in cardiac patients is again a controversial aspect because of the risk of bacteremia which could be there. I really wish I would be taking this topic in a theory class in front of all of you. The first question I would like to ask is, is plaque visible to us in the naked eye? What soft deposits we normally see? Is it plaque? The answer would be no. Plaque is always invisible to the naked eye which is there. So in order to overcome this, we have certain plaque disclosing agents which are there, which are capable of staining bacterial biofilms on the surface of teeth, tongue and gingiva, making it visible for easy detection and removal which is there. This could of course play a very important role in patient education and motivation in the plaque indices for us to assess as well as evaluating the effectiveness of various plaque control agents which are there. How exactly can we use this in patient education and motivation? Now suppose you've called a patient for maintenance phase and you feel that the, you know, you do recognize that the patient is not following your oral hygiene instructions. He or she has not maintained their oral hygiene. 
well but you need to educate it to the patient the patient tells you have been brushing twice or thrice a day but you need to educate and motivate the patient to brush in a proper way you can always use these disclosing agents just ask them or apply the disclosing agent or ask them to chew on the wafers which are there and spit it out and you can educate and motivate them you know showing them how much of efficacy are they using in order the mechanical plaque control agents which are there now let us see the various agents which are used the various agents used are mainly erythrocin which stains plaque red so quite visible easy for motivation skinner's iodine solution fast screen mercurochrome preparations bismarck brown margromin basic fustine fluoxin b plus patent blue that is it's mainly a two tone dye which is very advantageous wherein it stains old or mature plaque in blue and newer or immature plaque in pink or red most of our patients have a thankfully a good habit of brushing before coming to the dentist so they tell us no doctor i brush twice or thrice but you examine the oral cavity you see a lot of thick plaque which is there but the patient is always arguing the fact that they brush twice or uh, thrice in a day so educate the patient and motivate you can always use this two tone dye which definitely differentiates between old and mature plaque which is there and the newly or immature plaque which is there so it stains the old or mature plaque in blue color and the mature or the immature plaque in red color which is there and of course the other dye which is used is the fluorescent dye which is going to be there so these disclosing agents are either uh, available as a solution wherein you take a small ball of cotton and apply it on the tooth surfaces and show it to the patient or you assess yourself and there are certain wafers which you can provide the disclosing agents are provided in a form of wafer which the patients will chew it for a few seconds and spit it out and the entire plaque will become visible for them so with this we are going to end up with the chemical plaque control agent chapter which is there in order to summarize we have dealt with what exactly is a chemical plaque control agent the definition the various classifications based on their actions based on the generations based on the agents which are there and we have dealt chlorhexidin very much in detail we studied about what exactly is chlorhexidin how does it act what are the disadvantages what are the various forms of chlorhexidin or the various agents which are there we saw why exactly we prescribe chlorhexidine in the way we have been always doing what are the reasons behind it and we dealt with the oral irrigators professionally and uh, home irrigation devices which are there in which we saw the supra gingival and the sub gingival irrigation we saw the rationale behind that to reduce the bacterial burden which is there and then finally we saw what exactly are chemical plaque control agents which are there this chapter is very very important theoretically for your practicals in the viva and in the case history discussions as well uh, this uh, is not very well given in karanza you need to refer to linde uh, as well but here in the slides i have covered everything from karanza the new edition which is there as well as the jan linde which is there i hope you guys enjoy the enjoyed the class which is there